have each for some of my This is amazing grace that you will take my place. How wonderful our Lord is and how grateful we really are today. We come into his presence with praise and thanksgiving. Praise is on our lips and thanksgiving in our hearts and love and worship of our Lord for all that he has done. Somebody look up to heaven this morning and say, Who is like unto me, O Lord? Who is like the Lord God of our salvation? In heaven above there is none like him. On earth below there is no one like Jesus. Every day I have failed. But only Jesus have not failed. His love is constant and he's been on our side all through. Somebody need to be happy this morning. From January to December, here we are. So much rain has fallen, so much thunder has stricken, but here you are. Can you think about all the good things you woke up with this morning? Life, health, and strength. And your family, your husband, and your wife next to you, your children, your grandchildren. And indeed, the Lord has been good to us. He has been really good to us. And we praise His name this morning. Our hearts praise Him this morning. Who is the lifter up of our heads, our shelter from the storm, bread when we were hungry, our, our friend, our redeemer, our shepherd, rock of salvation. Who is like the Lord? Who is a God like our God? And so we bless him this morning. Lord, I set our praise this morning. I set the Praises that you bring. We do thank you for all that we have received from your hands. Lord, you've been good to us. Thank you for our families, our friends, Lord. Thank you for your wonderful provision and wonderful protection, Lord. Lord, tongues cannot recite all that you have done for us. Time will fail us. Until eternity, we can never sing your praise. If words can fall like rain, still won't be enough to tell of your goodness this morning. But Lord, you see our hearts today. Lord, we're grateful. We come to say thank you, Lord. From the first of this year, now to the last Sunday of this year, Lord, your brother sickly, you deliver us sickly. Lord, we bless you and give you praise. Lord, we remember those who are mourning this morning. That's who's, this time is very difficult for them. Lord, we pray your strength for them in Jesus' name. Bless our time together this morning. And Father, we pray that you will get us ready for the new year that you have ahead of us, Lord. Father, we bless you, we give you praise. Lord, we want to thank you. And we, we have been blessed by you, Lord. We confess, Lord, that you have blessed us. You have been good to us. But Lord, we do ask you that this coming year be a better year for all of us. Let it be a healthy year for all of us. Lord, Lord we say by the authority that is in your name, that as this year is ending, that by your grace we will end this pandemic in Jesus' name. The strength of this pandemic will be broken. And Lord, that you will release and breathe upon us. Uh, breathe upon us, Lord. You who breathe, and, and the Bible says by your nostrils you drove the sea back so that your people might go forward. Lord, I drive this away, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Have mercy, we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. How many love the Lord this morning? Give him a hand of praise this morning. 
Bible says God is great and He's greatly to be praised. Let's greatly praise Him this morning. Hallelujah. Greatly praise Him this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know what? Well, when we start praising the Lord, heaven turns this way. Even the angels are jealous this morning. Amen. As we give Him our love and adoration. While you're still standing, would you join me as we read from Psalm 90? And we're going to read responsibly this morning. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Let's see. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of man. You carry them away like a flood, they are like a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it works. For we have been consumed by your anger, Amen. and by your wrath we are terrified. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your right. Return, O Lord, how long, and have compassion on your servants. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Again, we welcome you all in the great name of Him who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We're so happy to see some of you after, some of you for the first time, after a long time. Yeah. And we are grateful that the Lord has kept you. And we also I welcome all of our, the rest of our church family who are watching at home and some of them are working at this point. We pray that the Lord will keep you wherever you are. And also to all of our friends around the world, we are glad that you have tuned in. And that we pray this morning that you're tuning in and joining in uh, this service and connecting with the anointing that is here today will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Amen. I am glad you are in the right place. This is the right place. And this is the right time. And God's got a right word Amen. for each and every one of us. Amen. Another few days now. Uh, this year will be all over. And I do believe, again, uh, like never, this year has been a year of a message to God's people. I don't know how much of that message you have gotten, retained, a cared, uh, but I do pray as you hear the voice of the Spirit of God today that you will be reminded of all the things that God has personally taught you and shown you and required of you. It will be a waste for us to have gone through this year and learn all the things that we have learned 
and then make no improvement. You know, there is nothing you can do uh, with a man who uh, is a professional fool. It doesn't matter how you try to refine it. If you take a fool and you put it in a motor and you grind it and grind it so that the foolishness can get out of him. But what do you have at last? A refined fool. He's still a fool. He's a technician. He's practiced the art of fooling. And there is no help for a man who will not learn. And I just pray as this year rolls out, this has been a year of lessons. This has been a year of awareness. And so we need to make good on all the things that we have learned, whether spiritually, whether socially, uh, in every realm that God has allowed us to observe. Since March 2020, every person on this planet had had their life shaken by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, in some way, in, in some form. Even if you were not sick and somebody in your family was sick and the past, your life has been affected. In all the midst of the hardship and challenges, there has been the sense among many people that this year, this period has helped us to evaluate our lives and focus on what's truly important. You know, this time last year, as 2019 was ended, if someone would have told you, uh, uh, a year ago, that 2020, that the whole country and the world will essentially shut down for three months. Uh, that the busiest highways and cities across the world will be empty of traffic. That schools, colleges uh, will close for an entire semester. And restaurants, shopping malls, and cinema halls will close. And Hollywood, and Bollywood, and Nollywood will all put a hold to everything and at this they will have to just pack up for some time. You won't have believed it. We all have, all have changed this year. We all have changed this year. Look, if you have not changed, then you cannot change. <laughs> Uh, my friend, uh, God has allowed this. Uh, people have asked me, did God send this? I don't know. I cannot tell you God sent this. I know a loving, gracious God. I know God does allow difficult times and challenges. But all I am sure about is that if God didn't send it, God will use it. So it is a, it's a, it's a year that we all have been given an opportunity to change, to move, to reconsider, to reevaluate. Don't just stand there. You can move unless you're a tree. God has given us an opportunity. This corona has been, and I, I, I don't want you to misunderstand me, you know, but you who are here are testimonies that while others were talking about coronavirus and all of the other things that associate with the virus, the people that I know, people around me are talking about corona blessings and corona testimonies and corona, you know, promotions and corona, you know, you know, fortunes. Whether you know it, this being a great, great time for some other people. Who have, who have now become more in charge. But all of that on, that, on the scale of reality, it doesn't really matter. All that matters to me is that I am alive, my family are, and you are alive this morning. Amen. This time out, this recess from our regular life forced us to re-examine our values, our relationships, and our lifestyle while determining whether we are living a life of design 
or we are living our life in default. It's either you're living by design or you're living by default. How these old experiences have opened all of our eyes. You see, we, it's not, it's, we, did, we didn't call it 2020 for no reason. When you have 2020, they say you have what? Good yeah, good, perfect vision. That, that is, you can see. You have perfect sight. And now, if you cannot see after this eye-opening experience, you're truly blind and hopelessly incurable. In Matthew 13 and verse 14 through 15, Jesus said, uh, And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah, is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. Are you, are you with me this morning? For the hearts of these people have grown dull, their eyes are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their heart and tongue, so that I should heal them. How many of you have prayed, Lord, heal our land? You know, before the pandemic, that's been a prayer, heal our land. Now we have a, a real reason that we need healing. This thing needs to go away. But, but Jesus said, you know, they have eyes, but they cannot see. You, you, you know, now that some shops and restaurants and, and things are opening, people are back to their usual. They forgot now. Somebody was praying before. They forgot to pray now. Just same thing after 9-11. You know, the first few weeks after 9-11, churches were packed. You know, some churches were forced to lend money or get money to renovate and expand their building. And then just to find out that a few weeks after that, people are not coming again. And they're still in debt. How quick we soon forget. And that is our message this morning. That God is challenging us. Don't forget. Don't forget what we all have learned. All that you have learned. What did we learn? What did this experience of 2020, uh, what did it teach us? This is the last Sunday of this year, and usually here, uh, today is our makeover service. The, the Sunday we, we, you know, just think about all that the year means to us and get ready for a new year. You don't begin your resolution or your result on January 1st. It is too late. You don't invent weapons on the war front. You need to start now. Whatever you want to do in January, you need to start now. You need to begin now so that when the new year rolling, you are already, you know, doing it. Don't wait until January 1st because then, you know, well, uh, you just came to the new year with your old self. What did we learn? You know, there are five, many things we learned, but I just want to speak about five major things that uh, I learned, and I am sure some of you have learned those things. I, we learned about ourselves. Now you really do have time to hear your own voice and listen to your own heart because it's been so quiet. You have to have to, you know, look in the mirror, really. We learn about ourselves. Then we learn about others. Then we learn about life, life itself. And then for some of us, we learn about our spiritual life. I know some whose spiritual life, you know, just took off this time because we are all giving that time that we always thought we didn't have. I am sure the majority of the people in the world learn about God. I read many articles about 80s uh, 
doctors who, who knelt down beside their dying patients who, who are dying with grace seem like they, they know where they're going. That was not a big deal for them. And they knelt down and they prayed to God. Many, many became believers. People learn about God all around. And then we learn about death. We learn about death. I mean, the occasional will hear on the news somebody died and it didn't mean anything to us. But now that we're hearing thousands and millions and so, say, and we are asking ourselves, they actually died? Oh yeah, that many. That many have died. Can you imagine in the period of just about 12, 13 months, so many have gone to meet their maker. And I'm not sure how many of those people were ready to meet their maker. We learn about ourselves. If by now you don't, you don't know yourself, well, I don't know. If by now you don't learn about others, I don't know. If by now you have not really gained a, a perspective, a, the right perspective about life and living, I don't know. Uh, if by now you have not check and examine your own spiritual life. If by now you, you don't know God, if by now you don't know that death is a certainty. This is, these are the things that we learn. When we, we learn about ourselves, we learn about living, how we have, how we have lived. Some of us, especially those of us who live in this country, we have lived in, uh, in overindulgence, excessive indulgences. You know, uh, we live with misplaced priorities. Uh, we live with misappropriation. We live with misevaluation. And we live with wrong appraisal of life. Our behavior and attitude of just allowing ourselves to do whatever we want and uh, uh, you know say whatever we want and and you know all of that kind of things that are unhealthy. We learn about ourselves. We we learn about ourselves. We learn about ourselves. We learn about about ourselves, and we we'll see that, and we we. We were forced to ask ourselves, you know, questions. Is this really necessary? Do I really need this? Uh, we found many things about, about ourselves. We couldn't go shopping anymore. You know how when you have to go to a, a, some occasion on weekends and you say to yourself, standing in front of a full closet, Say, I don't have anything to wear to this place. And then you run to the mall to spend money that you don't have to go to somebody's location that you don't know. And those people don't care you can. <laughs> so we learn that we can actually go back. I, I see many people go back and wear their old clothes. Like I'm doing. You, you, you understand? We, we learn about ourselves. We, we say to ourselves, it doesn't take all of that. It, it's it's, it's not, not necessary. We learn about ourselves. So my friend, this morning, let us not forget those lessons that we've learned about ourselves. Don't let this reality shift anymore. Because what this corona pandemic did was to turn what we call reality upside down. And then we found out that we can actually live. I, I get to see, I'm privileged to see because I travel on missions. I am with people who are really poor, the least, the last, and the lost. And I see something in their lives that I crave. When I leave there and come back here, sometimes I'm just down. 
What is the need of, I see people that don't have, but live well. I see people that don't have much, but still try to give you what the last thing they have. I see the quality of life. You know, some people don't have the plasma screen that we, you know, sit down and watch. They just lay down on, on the grass and watch God's plasma screen at night. And look at the starry skies. Now, we don't have to feel guilty about God's blessings. Uh, you know, God blesses and fine. But what I'm saying is that we have made that a reality. So we learn, we learn, as we learn ourselves, we learn that we are not faithful people. We are not consistent. We are not reliable. We are not dependable or commendable. When we learn about others, you know, we that live on the side of the world, how we were complaining about this and that. And they say, stay home. Stay home. That's the only way you'll be safe. But there were people, others, who do not have home. They, they say, okay, wear a mask. You remember there was a time here in the U.S. of A. That we didn't find masks to buy. And when you found it, it was like $3 a piece. So now how will somebody who do not have money to... To buy food, buy a mask, stay home, stay home, stay home, and maintain social distance. Well, you have one man who has one room and have four children and two brothers and three uncles all in the same room. How about social distance? We learn about others. We learn about others that, you know, uh, these poor people are not the one who traveled anywhere to bring this disease. Somebody brought it to them. We learn about others. We learn that, you know, we're not doing too bad after all. And when you don't learn about others, you don't have a correct adjustment. It is that reference, uh, looking at how others are living, that help us to really say to ourselves, you know what, I'm not doing that. Uh, too bad after all. You may be complaining that you don't have a shoe, you don't have shoes to wear, but then you saw a man without feet. You know, we are conditioned to the uh, mirror life. The mirror, when you, when you look at a mirror, what do you see? You just see yourself. And, and we are now living in a very self-centered, selfish world. Everything is about I, our iPhone, iPad, I touch, I choose, I, 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 I. And that is the that is the mirror mentality, just looking at yourself. But God gave gave us an opportunity to have a window now. You see, when you when you look at a mirror, you just see yourself, and then you 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 want to be pleased with yourself. If what you see you don't like, then you make up. Excuse me, ladies. But when you look at through a window, you you have a broader perspective, and you see others, and th and then you can adjust your own reality. And you can be more grateful. And you can be less complaining. And, and now instead of just me and me and me, there will be something that rises up. Humanity rises up within you to give a hand, a lending hand to someone who you're better off than. We learn about ourselves. We learn that we're not faithful. We're not reliable. We're not dependable. We're not commendable. We learn about others. We learn about others that we, after all, we are all the same. The rich in, in locked up in their mansion, they have money but can't spend it. They have business meeting around the world, they can't get there. And we are all locked up, whether in big mansions or in small apartments, 
we were all locked up. And we had all had the same problem. So we learn about others. That we are all the same. So big is the big stuff. Looking down on that, on that man, we are all the same. Look, every man, it doesn't matter where he lives. Every man, it doesn't matter the size of his, his budget or his paycheck. Every man is after the same thing to take care of his family. Whether he makes $15 an hour or $150 an hour or 15000 an hour. So all trying to take care of his family. Let us not forget the lessons that we have learned about ourselves and then about others. Then we, we learn about life. What do we learn about life? What did this pandemic uh, teach us? First of all, the pandemic taught us that there is not much in life that is truly essential. See, when federal and state governments ordered that all businesses close their physical stores unless they were deemed essential, we suddenly realized that there are very few things in life that are actually essential. The pandemic turned reality upside down. Suddenly, the everyday hustle to work and the daily latte from your coffee shop, the weekly manicure, uh, or visit to the spa, or Friday night spot bar, or your Saturday night life that we thought we couldn't do without seem meaningless now and silly. And completely unnecessary. How many of you ladies had to deal, you know, with that nails for three months? <laughs> when you thought you couldn't, you couldn't do without going for that weekly manicure and get your heads, you know, set and straight and shifted. <laughs> All of a sudden, we saw that they were silly and, and unnecessary. We learned about life that there are not too many things that are actually essential. Many of us had to sit down on only essential workers. Somebody told me, you know, yeah, just stay home and then he said, no, I gotta go to work. I gotta get on the treadmill, you know, uh, during the rat race. My friends, this pandemic taught us there's no need for the rat race because the rat won. Don't join it. You're not going to win. My friend, we were all stuck in our homes, whether elaborate mansion, single home, single apartment, uh, with just our immediate families. Then we quickly learn what is truly important in life, family, friends, health, happiness, everything else secondary. We learn about life. And there's not, there's not much that's really essential. Uh, oh, now, 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 boss is calling you 3 a.m. at night. You can't even sleep. I gotta go. I'm on duty. I'm on call. I am on this and that. And you gotta leave and, and go. Well, the boss is trying to find his own way right now. Your phone is not ringing, and even if you're rich, you will not go. And if you did, somebody in that house will tell you, if you go, <laughs> we learn about life. We learn about, about family. That when everything is taken from us, everything is free, all we have is family. We learn. Let's not forget. Uh, let's not forget these lessons that we learn, and, and, and not misplace our priorities anymore. We learn uh, how much we really have exchanged for family time. We learn that we have lost control of our lives to routines and making a living. We learn that making a living has stopped us from making a life. 
We have become slaves to the daily grind and trapped in the rat race. We learn about life. What we learn about life, we learn about money. That money is no help when there is nowhere to spend it. When there are no items to buy or services to pay for. Health is not wealth. And would you rather be healthy than wealthy? We learn, we learn. First Timothy 6 and verse 7 through 8 says, For we brought nothing into this world. Oh, can I repeat that? For we brought nothing into this world. I don't know who, who brought something. But none of us brought, not even a name. We brought nothing into this world. And it is what? Oh, help me this morning. Huh? Friends, don't let friends go to sleep. <laughs> For we brought nothing into this world, and it is something. One thing is certain, like they say, some few things are, are just certain, debt and taxes. Well, you don't know you can't escape those. It is certain we can carry nothing. We brought nothing, we're taking So why is it then that all of our lives, we're trying to accumulate and amass all the things we're not going to take with us. These times talk us about money. The money is no help. Even the rich couldn't use their money. I mean, come on, when you can't even buy toilet tables. No matter how much money you have. And having food Verse 8 says, and clothing, with these shall be what? Content. Right? See, you didn't buy new clothes. Even if you have your money, the, the shopping malls were not open. Nobody's selling your clothes. So you find that your old clothes still fit. And it's still they. It's too good. And then you dress up, you're going nowhere anyway. <laughs> Did we not learn? We learn, we learn, we learn. We learn. Cardinal Robert said summed it up well when he recently said, This virus acted as a warning. In a matter of weeks, the great illusion of a material world that taught itself all powerful seemed to have collapsed. A microscopic virus has brought the world to its knees. Did we learn? The lockdown gave us the opportunity to understand the differences between necessities, wants, and needs. Let us not forget to continue to apply these lessons in practical ways. These can mean rewriting our monthly budgets, changing our daily habits, deciding to give or donate more money to charity, uh, shifting our financial priorities in other directions. So we learn about ourselves, we learn about others, we learn about life, and then in that we learn that there is, there is wonder in, in everything. Uh, what do I mean? The joy in life is the wonder of the simple things around us that we take for granted. The joy in life is the wonder of the simple things around us that we take for granted. The pandemic allow me to say 
The pandemic graciously interrupted our schedules. That is, our daily rituals, our routines, and help us to appreciate the small things in life we've always taken for granted, like sending our kids off to school, shaking hands with our neighbors, hugging our friends, going to work, shopping in a crowded mall, having an adequate supply of toilet tissue, eating out, attending church services, attending weddings and baby showers, funerals of loved ones. You know how many, how many, how many, how many funerals were done virtually? A very a great sister of mine, you know, had a 70th birthday. I really would have wished to be there, but we had to do it virtually. Let us not lose the lesson about appreciating these things and, and the sense of wonder that this time have given to us. Also, not to take for granted the important work of, of school bus drivers and crossing guards and teachers, doctors, nurses, and those who work in service industries. All of a sudden, we, we find that their work is important. Yes, we thank the Lord for them. They are the American idols. They are our heroes. While all of us are locked down, up in our house, they were out there. There were some of them who did not have a break. In fact, their workload increased. These are our heroes. These are the people we need to pay attention to and thank them, not wait for the next pandemic. Now, let's not take for granted the wonder, you know, I mean, being able to just send these kids uh, off to school, and then they, they are there. You know, you, you complain. I know people complain about the teacher. Oh, they won't leave my journey alone. They won't leave my journey alone. I, I don't know what this teacher has against my journey. Well, you were locked up with journey for one week and you tried to cool your ear out. <laughs> this is what this teacher has been putting up with all along and now you just spend one week with your own journey. And journey is driving you up the wall. Let's not forget, you know, the, 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 the sense of what we take all of these things for granted. But this time, this pandemic, Graciously open our eyes to see the importance. Uh, many of you, you know, I know call this year, when is the church open? When is the church? You keep on calling. When is it? And I'm thinking, when the church was open, you weren't coming. Now you miss your church. The, the sense, the sense of wonder. Rabbi Zacharias, legend. Wrote in his book, Recapture uh, a Sense of Wonder. So deep within all of us is a longing to recapture a sense of wonder. To marvel at the mystery of God and his creation, like we did as children. But through the years, our capacity for wonder has been stifled by business. And ambitions, and we have resigned ourselves to explain away all that once made us gaps in all. After all, how can we let our hearts believe that our minds, what, what our minds tell us, is nothing more than childish fantasy? And we recapture the wonder, Rabbi Zakaria reveals that our hearts' ultimate fulfillment. If a life of purpose and meaning is found in rediscovering and developing our God-given sense of wonder. This is why, you know, as we get older, we become stiff and un, un, unhappy as we used to, because we lose the sense of wonder. A child will always wonder. 
A child will see, you know, something beautiful in everything. But as we grow old, business and ambitions and this and that and that, take away that, that sense of wonder. That is why our, our the soul, our, the window of our soul is open to anxiety and depression because nothing excites us anymore. We learn that there is wonder every day and we neglect to see those things. Now you can't send this kid to school. Now you can't run here and there. Now you can't go see your parents. Now you can't attend your niece's weddings and, and your loved one's funeral. Do you know how many people, the parents died in the hospital and they can't go there? Somebody else have to, I don't know them, have to, you know, just put them, put them away. We learn about ourselves, we learn about others, we learn about life. And in life, we learn about family, we learn about how to correctly see money. And then we learn that there is wonder in all these things every day. I mean, there is, this is, this is wonder, this is, this is wonderful. This is wonderful to be able to see your loved ones and, and everyone around you. We learn that virtual interaction doesn't compare to in-person interactions. The pandemic forced our social world to go virtual. And the lockdown became one of the loneliest times for many people. We see an increase in depression, anxiety disorders, and we learn the importance and the need for social interactions. If you go to your grocery store and that little chat with the checker or a little chat with that pizza delivery boy, uh, you know, and the waiting doctor's waiting room, that chat with the secretary there, it's, it's helpful. And now we don't have anybody to talk to. We learn that attending weddings Baby showers, birthday celebration of loved one in a sweatpant with a Zoom link it was not much fun after all. I would love to have been in my niece's wedding. A great man of God, pastor and mentor died. You know, we had to do all of that virtually. And, and people just sit down in their room with sweatpants. Attending a, a black tie event. After the whole thing is over, we feel that it was not much fun after all. So I've been able to be there. You see, you see, the greatest gift on somebody's wedding and all those, it's not the gift you bring. It is the gift of yourself. And when people are in mourning and, and when they see you and you, you, you comfort them, that is what we are made for. Soon as we are able to come together again, do you remember the inexpressible joy you felt seeing your family and friends in person after months of visual visits? Let's not forget the lessons learned in lockdown by appreciating and respecting our family and friends whenever we are spending time with them. Young man, young woman, be, please be fully present. When you're spending time with your, your loved ones, and please turn on off those phones, put it in silence, and, and be fully present. Let's appreciate these things. These are the lessons we've learned. We've learned that we, we can find strength to face the challenges. I mean, many of us, they just, you know, fall down and die. We rise up. We manage. A lot of people became inventors even in this in this stuff. People rearranged stuff. People rearranged them. People went on, on, on diets and, and decided, you know, now that we can go out to eat, now that we can, you know, let's let's go vegan. <laughs> we found strength to face this challenge. We found ways to survive. 
We made adjustment. We, we found out how just to live. You know, after all, there are others that don't have all of these things. This is how they live every day. They survive. They survive. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, on Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, there was a big storm. You know, many, many of you know about that. Yeah. Unfortunately, in my area, we lost power. And so, Christmas Eve, you know, to Christmas morning, we didn't have power. Christmas Day, we didn't have power. So we were there in darkness. The house is beginning to get cold. My family is there. My little grandbaby is on the way coming. Didn't know what to do. Ran out everywhere. Drove like a crazy man on Christmas morning looking for to buy a generator. On my way, I start saying to myself, here am I in America. <laughs> On Christmas Day, looking to buy a generator. If somebody had told me that somewhere around the world, the other part of that, I said, well, that's come. But here am I. Here am I. Here am I. And, and I am trying to say, uh, when I started thinking about it and I started getting anxious because I want my family to be comfortable, the thought came to me and said, hey, hey, brother, <laughs> these are the way some people spend their Christmas. <laughs> There's some people right now that, you know, they, they don't even have anything to put on the table. I'm just trying to have power so I can warm up the feast. And I said, no, I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to, when I said I'm not going to complain, you know, a thought came to my mind, call, and the first person I called is the first person that helped me out. So, my, my friends, we learned, we, we found strength to face the challenge that faces. 2020 has been a year, unlike any year we have ever seen. Let's use this unique circumstances to grow in ways that we have never before. If God allowed it, then something good must be coming out of it. And it's up to you, it's up to me to gain that perspective, the lessons we have learned, to make sure that it doesn't go away and get back to, to, to the usual. We learn about ourselves, we learn about others, we learn about life in life, we learn about family and money. We learn that it's wonder in everything. We learn that virtual interaction doesn't compare to in-person interaction. We, we learn that we can find strength to face any challenge. So my friend, today, whatever it may be, it may not be COVID for you, it may be something else that you're going through. The Lord on your side, you will find strength to face Amen. your challenge. Amen. And then we learn about spiritual life. You know, if you were re reading and paying attention to all around the world, you see people on the street of their cities, on their knees, praying. You see policemen, you see doctors in, in, in hospitals joining hand and they're Pray. You see people, you know, you know, taking care of other people. So after all, you know, we are essentially spiritual. We're just people who do not want to show it. But we cannot deny it. we are spirit beings. Every time challenge problems come, we resort back to that spiritual life. My friends, this is why we get on our knees. People get on their knees right on the streets and pray. Then we're not crazy. That's the only way. The government is shut down. The politicians are trying to fend for themselves. The scientists are walking in the background. They promise us a vaccine and the politicians promise us safety. But who is knocking at your door? We learn about spiritual life. We learn that we are deeply worldly, but superficially 
spiritual. And this I call for adjustment. That we should be really spiritual and not wait until we have a crisis. And not wait until we need God to call him to have a relationship with God on a daily basis. And so when there is problem, God is here when I'm looking for him. He's not an ATM machine that you stop by, you know, every time you need money. He's not a spare tire that you only go to when we have a flat. Then we, we learn, we learn about death. Many people have died. Think about it. Millions have died. Unfortunately, not many of them are prepared to face their maker. And some of them will go where they ought not to have gone and afford partly theirs and ours. Because we did not take time to tell somebody about hereafter, about Jesus, that they can secure their future in Him. We learn that debt is the great equalizer. We learn that before now we have been living unconsciously about the idea of debt. My friend, that is not a conspiracy. That is a reality. It is the appointment all of us have made without knowing what time. But we have made that appointment. We learn uh, that it doesn't matter who you are. In Luke 16, verse 19 through 22, we read this story, and I just want to bring your attention to one word there as we reach, read this story. Luke 16, verse 19 uh, to 22. It says, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day. That was his life. That was his lifestyle. That's how he lived. He feared he clothed in purple. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate. So somehow this rich man, unknowingly or knowingly, is connected to this rich man because the poor man was right there at his gate. There's no way he's going to go in and out without seeing this man. And that's all of our life. We are connected somehow. All of our lives. So you need to understand, if you're going to find meaning in life, you're going to find it when you begin to discover what you can do to help others. You are made for a purpose to do something that nobody else can do to give to others. Take a clue from nature. Everything in nature gives. That is the intent of the Creator. He made everything to give. If nature withholds, we won't be alive. If the sun refused to shine this morning, if we don't have air, but everything in nature gives, only man learned the art of withholding. Only us withhold, and that's why we are the only one constipated. Let's go on. Desiring, this poor man desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell on the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his soul. In thought upon injury. This was his life. Jesus painted this picture to us to, to be very vivid and clear. This was this man's life. This was this man's life. And he didn't say anything. He just, this is how life is. Jesus said, the poor, you will always have among you. Fingers are not equal. They can be equal. It's not bad to be rich. It's, it's, no one, it's, not, it's not good to be poor. But that 
understand the emphasis of the story. So it was the beggar, the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Hmm. It's not how you start, but how you finish. So he was a beggar in this life. He was suffering and without in this life, lacking. But when he died, he was ushered into the presence of God by God's angels. Hmm. Think about that, my friend. Okay, this is why I brought you here. One word. The rich man, can you help me read to, today? Oh, can you read it? Also. The rich man also died. Yeah, also, also. The rich man also. Yeah. That's what I want you to see. That is the great equalizer. The rich man also. Oh, he also died and was buried. That's all it says. But the poor beggar was carried and ushered into the hereafter, the presence of God by angels. The rich man just died. And the day he died, everybody forgot his name. And so they'll just refer to him. Okay, take the body here. Put the body over there. You know, put the blanket over the body. Nobody mentioned the name anymore. It's just a body now. Mm -hmm. Mr. Big Star. Mm -hmm. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Things have changed now, my friends. We learned about death. The rich man also died. See, while a vaccine, the scientists are promises of vaccine and thank God for their work. While a vaccine will limit the immediate threat from the virus for us, and we may be able to, to completely subdue this virus and win the war over this virus, but that is will still have its day. And they claim upon all of us. We can win over the virus, we can win over death. As natural as it may be for us to reach out for this vaccine to calm, you know, our fears and heal us, there's nothing we can there's no vaccine for death. Our lives are on the load. It is appointed for man, and once we will all die. But dying is not the end. If you do something about it, because it's in life you prepare for death. When you prepare for death in life, you will have life in death. But if you do not prepare for life in death, if you do not prepare for life in death, that's all. When death comes, but God has opened the door for us. Jesus said in John 11, 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? If you don't believe this, you have not prepared for death in this life. Do you believe this? Finally, we learn about God. See, we learn about ourselves that we are not faithful and not reliable, not dependable, neither commendable, but we Learn that God is faithful. God is reliable. God is dependable and definitely commendable. It is God who threw all of these up and down that remain constant. Let 
Let's take a cue from our financial institutions. When uncertainty becomes too high and lenders realize a potential borrower is a high risk or that he might default on the loan, they can sometimes come to a higher authority like the federal government to guarantee a loan. Are you with me? As in the case of guaranteed student loans. Such loans offer a safety net and take away most risk for the lender. So the bank will, you know, have the government to secure that loan. They will turn to a higher authority. Hmm. We have an important lesson to ponder as we all have lived through this time. What kind of higher authority should we be turning to in order to guarantee our future? Because we're living in uncertain times. They tell us, yeah, this will do this, this will happen, this will happen, but then it's uncertain. It's maybe, but we need to guarantee our future. So like those banks do, we also turn to a higher authority. We learn that God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in, in trouble. We learn that they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. We learn that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We learn that surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrows that fly by day nor the pestilence or pandemic that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste in them. We learn that if we make the Lord our refuge and our, our the most high, our dwelling place, no evil shall befall us, no plague shall come near our dwelling, for he will give his angels charge over us to keep us in our ways. We learn that because we have set, set our love upon God, therefore He will deliver us. He will set us on high because we have known His name. Let us not forget what these times have taught us. Praise the Lord. Let us not forget don't forget what you learn about yourself, about others, about life, about family, about love, uh, about your spiritual life, about death, about God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we rise up? Thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your reminder. For oh, after all you have been with us, even though we have walked through the shadow of death, your presence has been with us, Lord. There is no one we can give credit to. For our lives. There is no one that can get the praise for our preservation. It is you, O oh Lord. It is you who have been faithful, constant, reliable, dependable. And Lord, we bring our praise to you today. Thank you that you're using this. It doesn't matter what happened, you still keep us 
And you will bring us safe on the other side. Amen. Now, thank you for your word to remind us not to forget what we have learned. Lord, we receive grace today not to forget. Amen. We receive grace to be better. We receive grace for our eyes to be open. We receive grace to live in such a way that we order our priorities. Amen. We receive grace to understand and live in the consciousness that we are living in the shadow of death. Amen. But we are not afraid because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. We believe in him. We believe that our future is secured in him. Amen. Lord, we thank you for reminding us what we have really learned about what's truly important and essential that family, friends, health and happiness are more important than every other thing. Help us not to lose this lesson again. Help us not to go back like the dog, go back to his vomit. Let that not be our case, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Lord, I pray for your people here and those who are watching online. I pray that this week will be a week of victory for them. I pray, Lord, that this week will be a week of testimony. This week, as we soon we end this year, let us end this year with praise. Let us end this year with testimonies. Let us end this year, oh God, oh, with hallelujah. Thank you once again, Lord. We bless you and give you praise. Lord, I release your power now for those who need your touch. I release your healing for that man, for that woman who needs to get off that sick bed in Jesus' name. I pray for that man or that woman who have not come to know you and I say, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you find a way to their heart today. I ask for angelic assistance for your people, Amen. that you will watch them as they go in and as they come out. Lord, as this year runs out, oh God, we see many, many evil all around us. But I say, Lord, put a mark upon your people, put a mark on their family. Bless them, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, take us through this, this year and give us a brand new year. In Jesus' wonderful name, Amen. 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 My friend, if you are out there and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, why don't you invite Jesus this morning to be the Lord of your life? Just say this prayer with us here. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you this morning. I come in the name of Jesus, and I am sorry for my sins. I ask for your forgiveness today. I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you and I ask that you come in my heart to stay. Please, Lord, write my name in the book of life. I commit my future into your hands and I thank you for the gift of salvation. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a happy, happy week. God bless you. Nice to see all of you.